UQ Industry 4.0 Energy Test Lab, the launch of it. Um, at the outset, I acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodianship of the lands on which we meet today and pay respect, uh, respects to their ancestors and their descendants. Professor Deborah Terry, AO, Vice Chancellor and President of UQ. Uh, Mr. Jeff Conley, who's on, online, Executive Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Siemens Australia and New Zealand. Professor Alex Subic, co-chair of Industry 4.0 Advanced Manufacturing Forum, and Deputy Vice Chancellor of Science, Engineering, Health, um, and Vice President of Digital Innovation at RMIT University. Um, Professor Tapan Saha, uh, lead researcher at the UQ Industry 4.0 Test Lab. Representatives from industry, including Siemens, our partner here, friends of UQ, uh, visitors from government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Professor Mohan Krishnamurti. I'm Pro Vice Chancellor of Research Partnerships at UQ. At the outset, a COVID-19 update and, uh, and housekeeping announcement. Due to the restrictions uh, that are upon us due to COVID-19, all guests will be required to maintain 1.5 meter distance apart and are requested to adhere to social distancing throughout the event. Uh, the test lab's capacity has been assessed to hold 12 people at any one point in time, and that's the test lab there. Um, the UQ Industry 4.0 test lab uh, concept started about uh, two or three years ago when um, UQ's then Vice Chancellor, Sir Peter Hoy, uh, Jeff Connolly, Alex Subit, uh, Professor Simon Biggs, who was the executive uh, uh, dean of EAC at that time, the engineering faculty at that time, and myself, we met to discuss the possibility of UQ being a partner in the National Industry 4.0 um, development strategy, along with six other universities in Australia. In terms of focus for the test lab itself, UQ was free to choose from uh, any number of disciplines that we are good at, and that was uh, an enormous luxury that was given, provided to UQ, and of course all the other six universities as well. We could have chosen agriculture, we could have chosen forestry, we could have chosen environmental sciences, or we could have chosen ecology, all areas in which UQ is world renowned for. But we chose to focus on renewal, renewable energy, simply because UQ is a global leader in this space, um, and also because UQ has made significant investments in this space, as you'll no doubt hear from our Vice Chancellor very shortly. In some sense, it was an ideal pairing between UQ, Siemens, and the Industry 4.0 Task Force because it brings together an impressive multidisciplinary team to work on problems that need to be solved in the future. At the test lab, you'll have an opportunity to integrate key technologies and expertise from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, cybersecurity, big data and, and, and analytics, design innovation, communication, human-computer interaction, software programming, economics, especially uh, social behavior economics, psychology, policy design, um, and uh, UQ's multidisciplinary energy research. And through digital twin Siemens technology, and we're very happy to see um, friends from Siemens here, the test lab will develop solutions and prototype energy management tools to improve energy efficiency um, in UQ buildings overall. Let's now watch a short video introducing the Industry 4.0 Energy Test Lab. UQ Energy Test Lab contributes to UQ's objective of being a world leader in energy neutrality from renewable energy sources. UQ Test Lab is a collaborative research, teaching and learning space for 21st century energy systems. And this particular lab is focused towards the whole supply chain of energy systems starting from renewable energy generation, transmission and distribution, and finally up to the building level energy consumption. The Energy Test Lab aims to engage with different parts of the industry to actually learn about 
the use cases and the potential risks for them. It focuses on the resiliency and the cybersecurity aspects of uh, running critical infrastructure and we try to replicate some of the realistic scenarios that are playing in critical infrastructure that cannot be really tested on directly. So the Energy Test Lab is a great digital twin that allows us to run experiments that are realistic and then train people who are able to get into the workforce as soon as they graduate. What is even more impressive about this is that we are able to reach out to the other labs around Australia and, and then leverage on their expertise within their labs. And together, you know, the whole nation's resilience starts to increase. With our real facilities in the field and with this laboratory here, this will be a true way of demonstrating the real life experience for the students' classroom environment as well as designing new tools and techniques that you can apply in the field. So that is the main essence that it is not only simulation based, you can design, you can test, you can validate and then you can apply them in the field. Apologies for the loss of audio at the start. Um, we will replay that uh, at the end. Uh, I'd now, now like to introduce Professor Deborah Terry, AO, Vice Chancellor and President of UQ. Um, Professor Terry recently joined UQ from Curtin University, WA, where she served as Vice Chancellor. Um, and um, since joining uh, UQ, since joining UQ again, uh, Professor Terry has been like her predecessor. Uh, extremely supportive of UQ's involvement in the uh, energy test lab. Thank you very much, Mohan, and uh, good morning, everybody. And can I too begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we are meeting here this morning? We honour their elders and their continuing cultural and spiritual connection to this land as we walk together on the path to reconciliation. And obviously acknowledge Jeff Connolly, who we're going to hear from soon. Jeff, it's a pity you can't be with us uh, today, uh, but look forward to seeing you into the future. And also Professor Alex uh, Subic, uh, and pity we can't uh, also have you with us here, Alex, but look forward again to seeing you. UQ colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, so I am reminded this morning very much of former Chief Scientist Ian Chubb's pithy observation that he made a number of years ago about research innovation, that it takes three to tango. What he meant, of course, is that innovation requires government getting policy settings right, that universities have to be more open and accessible, and that industry needs to understand the sheer capacity that sits within our institutions. So with the official launch of this Industry 4.0 Energy Test Lab, the Australian Government, UQ and Siemens are very much in lockstep and that is impressive. UQ, as, as Mohan has already uh, described, has a long-standing commitment to embedding sustainability across all aspects of our learning, discovery, engagement and our operations. Obviously, one of the most notable and visible examples of this commitment is our 64 megawatt solar farm outside of Warwick. The solar farm generates as much or more electricity each year than the university needs, making us the first major university in the world to offset all of our power from our own renewable energy assets. Here at our St Lucia campus, we also have Queensland's largest behind the meter Tesla battery. And the battery has allowed UQ to start trading in the wholesale electricity spot market with a custom control algorithm 
that enables us to automatically buy and sell power 24 hours a day. Again, we believe we are the first Australian university to do this. And we take enormous pride in these and other achievements in the energy space. So with our strengths and diversity in energy research, we are uniquely placed to understand and address the very significant challenges ahead. But that, as we all know, is not enough. The broader and far more important goal has always been to share the knowledge we generate from these initiatives as widely as possible so that that knowledge can be acted upon. And we can only do that through our partnerships with government and with industry, which obviously brings me back to today's launch. The National Industry 4.0 Test Lab Initiative is a wonderful model for collaboration. This particular test lab at UQ, as we've heard, is one of six around the country, and it will serve as a point of engagement between industry experts, researchers, and entrepreneurs. It will enable knowledge transfer, it will enable collaboration around power and energy system analytics, microgrid control, energy management, and cyber physical systems security. It will also create engaging and deeply realistic teaching and learning experiences for our students. So I do thank our foundational partners in this project, the Australian Government for providing funding and Siemens for the equipment and software. We now have a genuine opportunity to enable widespread adoption of digital industry 4.0 technologies across our entire energy sector value chain. That's a big, significant goal, and it's one that UQ is very well placed with government, with Siemens, to make an absolute difference. So thank you all for joining us on this critically important journey. And again, to our colleagues who are joining us via Zoom, we wish you could all be here, but we look forward, as soon as we can, we can have a second launch. You can always open things again, but uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much uh, for that for that introduction and, and speech that sets the scene and, and sets the goal for what the Energy Test Lab is all about. Thank you so much, Professor Terry. Um, as uh, Professor Terry has already mentioned, uh, Jeff Connolly, the CEO of Siemens, cannot be here today uh, due to COVID travel restrictions. Um, and Jeff has been involved in, a, in, in many committees, groups and task forces with the Australian government as CEO of Siemens. Uh, and Siemens as a company has been um, active in Australia since 1872. And the partnership with uh, UQ stretches way beyond uh, energy. It starts uh, right from uh, the involvement in MRI machines and so on, right now through to uh, energy systems as we'll see in a minute. Um, Jeff Connolly cannot be here today, but uh, we're gonna have a uh, listen to him by, by video. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. They are indeed and after all uh, the keepers of the memories and the traditions that form the foundation for all Australians to build on into the future. I'd acknowledge Professor Deb Terry, AO, Vice-Chancellor and President of UQ. Professor Alexander Subic, co-chair of the Industry 4.0 Advanced Manufacturing Forum and Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Science, Engineering and Health, Vice-President of Digital Innovation at RMIT University. Professor Mohan Krishnamurti, Pro-Vice-Chancellor Research Partnerships and all members of the University Senior Management Group. Professor Tarpan Saha, Professor and Lead Researcher UQ Industry 4.0 Test Labs, Faculty of Engineering, Architecture and Information Technology UQ, representatives of government and industry, all UQ colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to be here today to give some introductory remarks about the journey of establishing Industry 4.0 frameworks into Australia and in particular uh, the crucial part of education and research infrastructure, which is our, our test labs. Siemens uh, has had a proud and long history 
in Australia, um, having been uh, represented here for over 150 years. And in particular, in Queensland, we've been delivering technologies with purpose. Um, I think we need to differentiate be between simply providing technologies and those sorts of technologies which form the basis of infrastructure and the furthering of society. One of the projects that I'm most proud about in Queensland is the work we're doing in, in one of the world's most advanced reef simulation centres. These centres enable us to understand what's going on with different temperatures and conditions and actually also simulate what needs to be done or could be done uh, to preserve and maintain those reefs into the future. The whole Industry 4.0 movement in Australia came about as a result of uh, a German-Australian advisory group commissioned by the uh, German uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel and Australia's then Prime Minister Tony Abbott. The idea was to leverage off one of the great manufacturing cultures, engineering centres in the world in Germany and understand how, how they were preparing for what has been described as the fourth industrial revolution. The world of digital twins of uh, production lines, digital twins of products and digital twins of performance. Uh, using that sort of philosophy and digitalisation capability and, and putting it into those environments and markets in Australia uh, that would help to serve us transition into the future. The Prime Minister's Industry 4.0 Task Force was set up to work together with the Platform 4.0 in Germany to leverage off the work they had done and actually to bring that home to Australia in the same structure of the work streams and actually apply it to our own set of circumstances. Uh, the work streams uh, were standards, research, uh, security of network systems, the legal systems and of course very very important is the one that we're here today is that future of work education and the test lab environment that facilitates the bringing together of research and education using the sorts of digital tools that we're all going to need to use in the industrial settings of the future. The concept of the Prime Minister's task force was to set up one university in each state to, to look at topics relevant to Australia's competitive future. Uh, UQ in this particular instance took on the topic of energy, energy transformation energy efficiency and applied the software tools to uh, understanding how grids work, understanding how buildings work and better managing that energy transition. I think what's uh, really impressive in, in the test lab that's been set up in Queensland is that we're actually talking about a digital twin of the network, not simply a product, not sim a physical product, not simply a production system, but understand and simulating an entire electrical grid which is vital if Australia really wants to make the transition from uh, central energy generation to decentralise with all of the complexity attached to that. As an extension of what you would consider a traditional laboratory research project, UQ are actually utilising this software around their campus, understanding what their energy consumption is with the ability then to adjust what, how their systems are running. This is truly taking big data and turning it into smart data. And as I said before, at the end of the day, technology has to have a purpose. And that's exactly what UQ have done with all of the tools that have been uh, introduced here. In closing, I would like to congratulate all those involved uh, at UQ for your thought leadership, being part of what I think is a very profound network of test labs in Australia. Uh, we wish you luck as you explore the opportunities that have that are kind of come from this test lab. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of today's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I'm assuming that he's uh, still online, uh, listening and, and watching the proceedings, and being very proud of what we've uh, together been able to achieve uh, with uh, uh, the National Industry 4.0 Task Force, Siemens, and UQ.
Um, and that brings me to introduce Professor Alex Suvich, co-chair of the Industry 4.0 Advanced Manufacturing Forum and Deputy Vice Chancellor of Science, Engineering, Health, and also Vice President of Digital Innovation at RMIT. Um, and again, Alex uh, cannot be with us here today in, in person, but he's um, online watching in uh, with pride, I'm sure. Um, he is currently leading the national, in national network for Industry 4.0 Test Labs and the Committee for Future Work, Education and Training under the auspices of the Australian Industry Group. Um, it was interesting, that first meeting that we had with uh, Jeff Conley, um, um, Peter Hoy and myself, Alex couldn't make, that, make it to that either because there was a tornado warning in, in, in Melbourne and he was stuck in Melbourne. So it's uh, perhaps a continuation of that. Uh, that he can't be with us uh, here today again. But he sent us a video and uh, we'll watch that video now. Launch of the Industry 4.0 Test Labs at University of Queensland. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to reach this milestone where one of our newest Australian Industry 4.0 test labs is being launched, focusing on sustainable energy and intelligent energy distribution. In fact, bringing Industry 4.0 to the energy sector. Energy is critical for manufacturing as it is for all the other industry sectors in Australia or globally. Hence, it is quite right to focus on this particular area within the portfolio. Uh, it's my privilege and my, my honour to, to lead the Australian Industry for Zero Test Labs Network. From the inception, we have established in each state an Industry for Zero Test Labs to drive transformation across industry sectors and in particular across advanced manufacturing to prepare our industry for the challenges as well as for the benefits of the fourth industrial revolution. The common thread across all the networks, uh, all the industry for zero test labs across the country is digitalization across the cyber physical systems and also a portfolio of approaches and sectors that are that aim to achieve scale in transformation at pace that we all need at this particular time. Uh, the Industry 4.0 test labs at University of Queensland follows the same operational mode as the other test labs. It is an open, collaborative, supportive, uh, non-competitive environment that's welcoming for industry, SMEs in particular, to come to plug and play, to socialize ideas, processes, technologies, that are associated with the fourth industrial revolution to discuss with university teams and experts ways of modifying or transforming their own business models and technologies and approaches in order to prepare them for success within the fourth industrial revolution. The Industry 4.0 Test Labs at Queensland University will no doubt play an important role in this transformation. It is on scale potentially the largest test lab we have established across the country. It is one that actually connects sustainable or clean energy with intelligence that Industry 4.0 brings with it, that optimizes the efficiency of energy, the usage, the distribution of energy using intelligent digitalization. And that combination of cyber physical systems and using intelligent data analytics is exactly what is at the heart of the fourth industrial revolution. I look forward to engaging with the test lab and its experts going forward and us together growing the cluster of industry engaged with test labs and helping transformation of industry sectors across Australia. Congratulations once again, and I hope you have a successful and enjoyable launch today. Launch of the Industry 4.0 test labs at University of Queensland. Uh, it's true. As um as Professor Suvik um, mentioned, uh, this is uh, one of the largest test labs uh, that have been set up in terms of scale. 
of operation and so on. And to tell us a little bit about, um, about this, I now invite uh, Professor Stefan Saha to say a few words. He's the lead researcher in the uh, UQ Industry 4.0 Energy Test Lab. Thank you, Professor Mohan Krishnamurti. I, too, acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodianship of the lands on which we meet today and pay my respect to their ancestors and their descendants. Professor Deborah Terry, AO, Vice Chancellor and President UQ, Mr. Jeb Conley, Executive Chairman and CEO, Siemens Australia and New Zealand, Professor Alexander Subic, Co-Chair of the Industry 4.0 Advanced Manufacturing Forum, and Deputy Vice Chancellor of Science, Engineering, and Health, and Vice President of Digital Innovation, RMIT University, Professor Mohan Krishnamurti, Pro Vice Chancellor Research Partnership, and members of the University Senior Management Group, representatives from industry, friends of UQ, UQ colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to show you a couple of slides just to tell you what we have done for the last 12 months. And particularly, if you look at the picture here on the first slide, what you can see in the next couple of minutes will take you inside the lab. So we have a couple of objectives in this lab. The first one is that to facilitate engagements between different schools and faculties of the university and to facilitate engineers work with non-engineers on the major energy challenges, and also to provide a hands-on experience for our students and industry professionals, and to facilitate engagement between SMEs, industry on Industry 4.0 technology. So the lab has got quite a number of focus in terms of the research that we would like to do. Uh, so first one is the energy management and IoT devices and using the university's building management systems. You can think of any high-rise buildings or including a commercial place. You know, the energy management and optimization will play a big role in the future in terms of the energy efficiency. We have the facility here to study cyber physical system security, power systems analytics and grid operation, and also the microgrid and renewable energy integration. The key point here I would like to mention to you is that when we have the real equipment in this lab, that's what Siemens uses in their real field. So our students will be exposed to the real equipments and they will get the training. And this lab, as we have already mentioned, that can be extensively used for our engineering program, for other programs, for example, cybersecurity, programs in master's level. And just an example, during even COVID-19, semester one and semester two, we have used this lab through video. Already more than 220 students have been served for the laboratory demonstration. And we have many industry partners over the years. Some of them are here. Thank you for coming in. And we'd like to build on that. So this is the slide that I would like to take a little bit of time, maybe one more minute on this one. So UQ is a living lab. That's what we are proud of. It is not that solar farms can be built by anyone. But then solar farm, we are a market participant. As Professor David Terry mentioned that, we have two megawatt Tesla battery. We can participate in the real-time spot market. So that is a unique situation we have at UQ. We are not only producing. We are understanding the transmission and distribution problems. And then we are consuming inside the buildings and how do we use the IoT devices and then max and optimize the energy consumption. So at the end of the day, this is a big, this is the largest cyber physical system you can think of. So how can you avoid cyber physical system security? So overall, this lab as a whole of UQ, we will have the opportunity to investigate and use the big data, apply artificial intelligence, and to optimize the overall energy consumption, transmission, and distribution. Well, I'm at the end of my presentation. We have a very strong web presence. I'd like to request all of you to visit the website 
and myself and my colleague, Professor Ryan Ko, we are the primary contacts, and we look forward to develop from here a very strong industry collaboration in the years to come. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tapan, for this. Um, and with that, uh, we come to the, um, uh, the close of this part of the function. Um, there'll be um, an official opening of the lab uh, in a minute. Uh, request uh, Professor Debbie Terry for uh, coming forward to cut the ceremonial ribbon, uh, which Tapan and I will hold tightly or, uh, on either end. These are COVID restrictions, okay? So th these are all COVID restrictions. But before I, I draw the official function to a close, I must thank Professor Debbie Terry for making space in her incredibly busy calendar to accommodate this opening and to come and grace us with her presence. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Um, I also acknowledge the uh, outstanding contributions of um, Professor Alex Subic from RMIT University and Jeff Connolly from, Simon, from Siemens. Your, your vision uh, together led to the creation of this and other test labs around Australia. And um, I'm sure in a few years, just as we, we, we look at creating UQ as a, a living laboratory to learn about energy, the balance between energy generation, distribution, management, efficiency, um, and, and sale as well. Similarly, and give, us, give our students an opportunity to learn about the process um, in, in, in that process. Similarly, I'm sure um, in a few years, when you look around at all the other energy, uh, the other test labs, you will have left a legacy for future generations. Thank you very much for your contributions, and thank you to the Australian federal government uh, for the grant that enabled the setup of this facility. And finally, the UQ team for, that helped in, in, in this launch, uh, Professor Tapan Saha, Ryan Koh, uh, and many others, including Liz uh, Escuero, who's here somewhere, yep, uh, Amy Ohan, and others from uh, UQ Protocol that made this happen, Lauren O'Keefe as well. Um, the, the hospitality, uh, there's some coffee and cakes just around the corner from here. Please enjoy this. Um, in the meanwhile, um, Professor Ryan Koh will take the first batch um, for, an, for, a, for a tour of the test lab, and that um, you know who you are, so you please make your way to the entrance where Professor Terry will cut the ribbon and the first tour will, will uh, be undertaken by Ryan Koh. Thank you so much for attending today. UQ Energy Test Lab contributes to UQ's objective of being a world leader in energy neutrality from renewable energy sources. UQ Test Lab is a collaborative research, teaching and learning space for 21st century energy systems. And this particular lab is focused towards the whole supply chain of energy systems starting from renewable energy generation, transmission and distribution, and finally up to the building level energy consumption. The Energy Test Lab aims to engage with different parts of the industry to actually learn about the use cases and the potential risks for them. It focuses on the resiliency and the cybersecurity aspects of uh, running critical infrastructure and we try to replicate some of the realistic scenarios that are playing in critical infrastructure that cannot be really tested on directly so the Energy Test Lab is a great digital twin 
that allows us to run experiments that are realistic and then train people who are able to get into the workforce as soon as they graduate. What is even more impressive about this is that we are able to reach out to the other labs around Australia and, and then leverage on their expertise within their labs. And together, you know, the whole nation's resilience starts to increase. With our real facilities in the field and with this laboratory here, this will be a true way of demonstrating the real life experience for the students' classroom environment as well as designing new tools and techniques that you can apply in the field. So that is the main essence that it is not only simulation based, you can design, you can test, you can validate and then you can apply them in the field. Once we pass this, we set it to 6.5, and then we can see the black line is tracing the, the maximum, the red line, the maximum power points. And then we can see this one has been engaged, so this is really generating the power. So down the other side, we can see the, the power has been generated. Um, Students can also learn like the, if the wind speed increases to a bit noisy, sorry, um, that's the reality. So once the wind speed passes 30 meters per second, we can see down here the pitch control is being engaged. So because the, the machine can only have so much power generated, so later on it's like it cannot generate any power anymore, so it will um, pitch out the, the extra power. Okay. So the last one, it's more like to help me to ramp down the machine. So the last one we have the um, solar generation and also the um, battery storage. So this is featuring a smart household. And so we students can also come to this side to see how the uh, how the solar has been tracing the maximum power point and then generates the power. So in here, we can, uh, the student can control the battery storage depends on the situation. Whether the voltage of the system is too high, it needs to cast back. And all the uh, solar generation generates a loss of power, and then the power can go to the energy storage. So the student can really um, do their own smart grids and put their hands really onto the real machine and realize it's like it would have uh, lent in the uh, Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Okay, thanks very okay. much. Okay. So now, right? Yeah. Uh, so we just have to uh, put our attention to the screen here. And I'll Excuse me, can I just clip this on? Oh. I just clip this on. Is this okay? Yeah. So, uh, you know, as we generate the different energy uh, sources, there is uh, also the, the risk of cybersecurity attacks. So, this part of the lab uh, and this presentation. We're going to cover some of these challenges. 
Now, um, one of the main issues with that is that, as you can see over at the panels, and some of them, you can see the IP addresses being marked out. So, the reason for that is because uh, it's, it's, it's more efficient to actually uh, manage all these resources without the engineer going into the site. So, with that uh, remote management capability also comes with the risk of cyber attacks. Uh, the most prominent one is probably the, the example in the centre where Ukraine had uh, a few cities that were in 2016 and 2017 shut down by a cyber attack and the power out uh, caused a lot of uh, damage uh, to the cities. Now, um, I want to bring us to also another point is uh, more recently we have, uh, we have witnessed in Australia, we have Toll and Lion Brewery all running the same type of equipment. As you can see over here, uh, we, uh, if you can see the top of the iceberg, uh, that's, that's the area that the current vendors of the security are focusing on. They are focusing on the network detection of all the cyber threats. But um, there are currently no tools for the, uh, you know, the rest of the known threats here. Uh, such as the deception attack and uh, sig signal data injection attack. And there are no tools to discover unknown threats. There's also a lack of tools to inform operators and engineers about the real-time threats that they are facing. And another big problem that we have in the sector is the long-life legacy system. So compared to our desktops, uh, which is maybe a lifespan of two or three years, Industry control systems uh, have a lifespan of 20 years. Some of them become legacy systems over time. So it is a very uh, urgent uh, task for the industry to, to protect this. And we, we feel that by partnering with our partners like Siemens or SeaTech combined technologies, uh, integrators like that, uh, we cover different parts of the supply chain and hopefully we can present Horizon 2 and 3 opportunities. So this is a, a, an example set up. So building on to Richard's uh, uh, scenario, we have a wind turbine. As you can see, the wind turbine was there, so it took some time to generate. The energy is then used towards a manufacturing uh, situation. So in this, uh, we have two screens. As you can see, the, end, the operator is working on the human machine interface. And at the same time, they are turning on the uh, wind turbine speed. We have set it to uh, the speed of about 3,000 uh, for the rotation. And once it hits 3,000, it is ready to generate the energy that runs a conveyor belt. Now, this is a, a typical scenario in uh, ma many manufacturing plants. Uh, where the attackers are usually focusing on would be the connections to this, which is a, a maybe a Windows uh, XP uh, system that is uh, usually unsecure or connections between this and this, the human machine interface and the programmable logic controllers. And it is our job to look at it uh, and automate tools to do that. Here's an example of a, an attack. So as you can see, if once, once the attacker understands the infrastructure, they can spoof the input values, they can put in, you know, they can fake the value that's presented to the operator and let them know whether it's on or off. The values here, even though it's zero, it can be spoofed to 690 and so on. So all these kind of attacks actually reminds us of the uh, recent uh, attacks and also uh, not, so, not so distant uh, attacks on the Maroshido. Uh, we had this uh, 296 uh, kilo gallons of uh, sewage that's spilled into the cities and the lakes. Uh, it was done by a disgruntled uh, contractor who had access to the systems, uh, but they weren't able to detect the, the problems until they've done a lot of forensics on the networks. A much more serious situation is a nuclear plant that is being run, and the enrichment, uh, enrichment equipment was slowed down, but the, the display of that uh, signals was not, you know, was, not, was showing that everything is okay. So, um, the equipment that I show you here uh, is the same family as all this equipment and I think there's a lot of uh, potential for us to automate it. So in terms of automation, we, we have uh, been researching on automation uh, techniques which helps operators you know, to, 
to be able to detect at real time and whether their system has been hacked. So in this case, we detect a stealthy uh, deception attack that was launched onto the equipment. And uh, we feel that there's a lot of commercialization value as well. Uh, we see a lot of, uh, as you remember, the iceberg, there's a lot of uh, potential engagement with the industry and the government. And so that's all from, for my presentation. Thank you. Okay, so just you know, give okay. Just okay. an idea okay. that this is the real equipment yeah. Siemens has got installed them in Heron Island in our UQ. So this is what we can connect from this side, human machine interface, to the real equipment there, and then you can control. So the students will have a real experience in hands-on experience, understanding the control and protection. That's what they see in the field and how that is connected to the real system. This is how is in Island. Yeah, this is the same setup. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. setup in Gap and all No. Because Heron Island is a micro grid. It's not connected to the yeah. system. So this is a typical example of a micro grid control with renewables, battery, and other things. This way. Okay, okay, so we have. I am a Mexican PhD student in electrical engineering here at UQ. Let me introduce you to the training room. You can see here there are 16 high performance computers which can handle the most powerful power system analysis software, such as Siemens, uh, PSSC, which is a Siemens product. We have two main objectives here. The first one is reinforcing industry professional skills. So industry professionals can come, and they can increase their current industry uh, power system analysis skills through a set of training sessions designed by our group. And the second one, empowering UQ students. Undergrad and postgrad students can use the commercial state-of-the-art power systems to get ready to the real world. And we can help them to solve the industry uh, related research problems, such as myself. I am currently working on one important project, the Queensland Government uh, Renewable Integration. Please, if you can see here, this is the actual Queensland diagram with some key buses as uh, Calvell, Hayes, we have the Far North, and we have almost 3,000 electrical nodes connecting the actual single generators, large-scale wind and solar PV units. And we are trying to explore the evolution of the network stability from the base fossil to renewable-dominated power grids. So in this way, we can identify potential issues for the coming decade. Uh, in this way, UQ and the Energy Test Lab strongly participate in the enabling of power systems for a sustainable world. Thank you. Thank you. This is the project we are working with Advanced Queensland yeah. Funding and also PowerLink and the Australian Energy Market Operator are our partners. So, yeah. we may have an opportunity to be Yes, of course. This is the beginning of Queensland Network. What will happen in 2030? 50% renewables. As you know, 2014, the situation will completely change. Yeah. So this will be continued for next year. Rabban, we should aim at having a center of excellence in energy. UQ yeah. should be leading uh, that, that should be our target. nationally. Yeah. That should be our target. Thank you. Thank you. We'll bring it stand on the companies in the security space. Thank you. So that concludes the, uh, the tour. Uh, please feel free to uh, have your refreshments. Uh, I'll just cut you to that. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's good comment. <laughs> <laughs>
UQ Energy Test Lab contributes to UQ's object. UQ Energy Test Lab contributes to UQ's objective of being a world leader in energy neutrality from renewable energy sources. UQ Test Lab is a collaborative research, teaching and learning space for 21st century energy systems. And this particular lab is focused towards the whole supply chain of energy systems starting from renewable energy generation, transmission and distribution, and finally up to the building level energy consumption.